Christianity in the 14th century consisted of an end to the Crusades and a precursor to Protestantism. Inquisition King Philip IV of France created an inquisition for his suppression of the Knights Templar during the 14th century. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella formed another in 1480, originally to deal with distrusted ex-Jewish and ex-Muslim converts. Over a 350-year period, this Spanish Inquisition executed between 3,000 and 4,000 people, representing around 2% of those accused. The Inquisition played a major role in the final expulsion of Islam from the kingdoms of Sicily and Spain. In 1482, Pope Sixtus IV condemned its excesses but Ferdinand ignored his protests. Historians note that for centuries Protestant propaganda and popular literature exaggerated the horrors of these inquisitions. According to Edward Norman, this view "...identified the entire Catholic Church with the occasional excesses wrought by secular rulers." <laughs> Western Schism the Western Schism, or Papal Schism, was a prolonged period of crisis in Latin Christendom from 1378 to 1416, when there were two or more claimants to the See of Rome and there was conflict concerning the rightful holder of the papacy. The conflict was political, rather than doctrinal, in nature. To escape instability in Rome, Clement V in 1309 became the first of seven popes to reside in the fortified city of Avignon in southern France during a period known as the Avignon Papacy. For 69 years popes resided in Avignon rather than Rome. This was not only an obvious source of not only confusion but of political animosity as the prestige and influence of the city of Rome waned without a resident pontiff. The papacy returned to Rome in 1378 at the urging of Catherine of Siena and others who felt the see of Peter should be in the Roman Church. Though Pope Gregory XI, a Frenchman, returned to Rome in 1378, the strife between Italian and French factions intensified, especially following his subsequent death. In 1378 the conclave elected an Italian from Naples, Pope Urban VI. His intransigence in office soon alienated the French cardinals, who withdrew to a conclave of their own, asserting the previous election was invalid since its decision had been made under the duress of a riotous mob. They elected one of their own, Robert of Geneva, who took the name Pope Clement VII. By 1379, he was back in the palace of popes in Avignon, while Urban VI remained in Rome. For nearly 40 years, there were two papal curias and two sets of cardinals, each electing a new pope for Rome or Avignon when death created a vacancy. Efforts at resolution further complicated the issue when a third compromise pope was elected in 1409. The matter was finally resolved in 1417 at the Council of Constance where the cardinals called upon all three claimants to the papal throne to resign and held a new election naming Martin V Pope. <laughs> Western theology Scholastic theology continued to develop as the 13th century gave way to the 14th, becoming ever more complex and subtle in its distinctions and arguments. There was a rise to dominance of the nominalist or voluntarist theologies of men like William of Ockham. The 14th century was also a time in which movements of widely varying character worked for the reform of the institutional church, such as conciliarism, Lollardy and the Hussites. Spiritual movements such as the Devotio Moderna also flourished. Notable authors include Duns Scotus (1266–1308). Ramon Lull (1232–1315). Giles of Rome, 1243 to 1316. Dante Alighieri, 1265 to 1321. Meister Eckhart, 1260 to 1327. Peter Oriel, 1280 to 1322. Marsilius of Padua, 1275 to 1342. Nicholas of Lyra, 1270 to 1349. Thomas Bradwardine, 1290 to 1349. William of Ockham, 1287 to 1347. Richard Roll, 1290 to 1349. Gregory of Rimini, 1300 to 1358. Jean Buridan, 1300 to 1358. Gregory Palamas, 1296 to 1359. 
Johannes Thaler 1300 to 1361 Theologia Germanica anonymous but often attributed to Thaler Henry Suso 1295 to 1366 John of Ruysbroeck 1293 to 1381 Nicole Oresme 1320 to 1382 John Wycliffe 1320 to 1384 Geert Groot 1340 to 1384 Catherine of Siena 1347 to 1380 Walter Hilton 1340 to 1396 The Cloud of Unknowing anonymous but often attributed to Hilton The Book of Privy Counseling anonymous but often attributed to Hilton Julian of Norwich 1342 to 1416 John Huss 1369 to 1415 Topic. Hesychast controversy Topic. Under church tradition the practice of hesychasm has its beginnings in the Bible, Matthew 6 verse 6 and the Philokalia. The tradition of contemplation with inner silence or tranquility is shared by all Eastern ascetics having its roots in the Egyptian traditions of monasticism exemplified by such orthodox monastics as Saint Anthony of Egypt. About the year 1337 hesychasm attracted the attention of a learned member of the Orthodox Church, Barlaam, a Calabrian monk who at that time held the office of abbot in the monastery of St. Saviour's in Constantinople and who visited Mount Athos. Mount Athos was at the height of its fame and influence under the reign of Andronicus III Paleologus and under the first ship of the Protos Simeon. On Mount Athos, Barlaam encountered hesychasts and heard descriptions of their practices, also reading the writings of the teacher in hesychasm of St. Gregory Palamas, an Athenite monk. Trained in Western scholastic theology, Barlaam was scandalized by hesychasm and began to combat it both orally and in his writings. As a private teacher of theology in the Western scholastic mode, Barlaam propounded a more intellectual and propositional approach to the knowledge of God than the hesychasts taught. Barlaam took exception to, as heretical and blasphemous, the doctrine entertained by the hesychasts as to the nature of the uncreated light, the experience of which was said to be the goal of hesychast practice. It was maintained by the hesychasts to be of divine origin and to be identical to that light which had been manifested to Jesus' disciples on Mount Tabor at the Transfiguration. This Barlaam held to be polytheistic, inasmuch as it postulated two eternal substances, a visible immanent and an invisible God transcendent. On the Hesychast side, the controversy was taken up by St. Gregory Palamas, afterwards Archbishop of Thessalonica, who was asked by his fellow monks on Mount Athos to defend hesychasm from the Barlaam's attacks. St. Gregory was well educated in Greek philosophy dialectical method and thus able to defend hesychasm using Western precepts. In the 1340s, he defended hesychasm at three different synods in Constantinople and also wrote a number of works in its defense. In 1341 the dispute came before a synod held at Constantinople and was presided over by the Emperor Andronicus. The synod, taking into account the regard in which the writings of the Pseudo-Dionysus were held, condemned Barlaam, who recanted and returned to Calabria, afterwards becoming a bishop in the Roman Catholic Church. One of Barlaam's friends, Gregory Akandinos, who originally was also a friend of St. Gregory Palamas, took up the controversy, and three other synods on the subject were held, at the second of which the followers of Barlaam gained a brief victory. But in 1351 at a synod under the presidency of the Emperor John VI Cantacuzinus, Hesychast doctrine and Palamas' essence energies distinction was established as the doctrine of the Orthodox Church. Following the decision of 1351, there was strong repression against anti-Palamist thinkers. Kalika's reports on this repression as late as 1397, and for theologians in disagreement with Palamas, there was ultimately no choice but to emigrate and convert to Catholicism, a path taken by Kalikas as well as Dimitrios Kaiduns and Ioannis Kaipariosiotes. This exodus of highly educated Greek scholars, later reinforced by refugees following the fall of Constantinople of 1453, had a significant influence on the first generation that of Petrarch and Boccaccio of the incipient Italian Renaissance. The Roman Catholic Church has never fully accepted hesychasm, especially the distinction between the energies or operations of God and the essence of God, and the notion that those energies or operations of God are uncreated. 
In Roman Catholic theology as it has developed since the scholastic period, the essence of God can be known but only in the next life, the grace of God is always created, and the essence of God is pure act, so that there can be no distinction between the energies or operations and the essence of God see, e.g., the Summa Theologia of St. Thomas Aquinas. Some of these positions depend on Aristotelian metaphysics. Contemporary historians Emperor John VI Cantacauzenos and Nikephorus Gregoras deal very copiously with this subject, taking the Hesychast and Barlamite sides respectively. The orthodox perspective is one that states that there is scientific knowledge based on demonstration and spiritual knowledge based on demonstration. That the two understandings must remain separate in order to have a proper understanding of both in order to reject dualism. The Eastern approach to understanding God and spiritual matters is one that should not be approached with a scholastic and or dialectical method philosophy. Respected fathers of the Church have held that these councils that agree that experiential prayer is orthodox, refer to these as councils as economical councils 8 and 9. <laughs> Monasticism Roman Catholic orders Topic. Many distinct monastic orders developed within Roman Catholicism and Anglicanism. Brigitines, founded c.1350 Hieronymites, founded in Spain in 1364, an Eremitic community formerly known as the Order of Saint Jerome. Topic. Protestant monasticism Topic. Monasticism in the Protestant tradition proceeds from John Wycliffe who organized the Lollard Preacher Order the Poor Priests to promote his Reformation views. Topic. Protestant Reformation precursors Topic. Unrest because of the Western Schism excited wars between princes, uprisings among the peasants, and widespread concern over corruption in the Church. A new nationalism also challenged the relatively internationalist medieval world. The first of a series of disruptive and new perspectives came from John Wycliffe at Oxford University, then from Jan Hus at the University of Prague. The Catholic Church officially concluded this debate at the Council of Constance 1414-1417. The conclave condemned Jan Hus, who was executed by burning in spite of a promise of safe conduct. At the command of Pope Martin V, Wycliffe was posthumously exhumed and burned as a heretic twelve years after his burial. <laughs> Crusade aftermath the island of Ruad, three kilometers from the Syrian shore, was occupied by the Knights Templar but was ultimately lost to the Mamluks in the fall of Ruad on September 26, 1302. The Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia, which was not a Crusader state and was not Latin Christian but was closely associated with the Crusader states and was ruled by the Latin Christian Lusignan dynasty for its last 34 years, survived until 1375. Other echoes of the Crusader states survived for longer, but well away from the Holy Land. Topic. Crusade against the Tatars Topic. In the 14th century, Khan Tokhtamish combined the blue and white hordes forming the Golden Horde. It seemed that the power of the Golden Horde had begun to rise, but in 1389, Tokhtamish made the disastrous decision of waging war on his former master Tamerlane. Tamerlane's hordes rampaged through southern Russia, crippling the Golden Horde's economy and practically wiping out its defenses in those lands. After losing the war, Tokhtamish was dethroned by the party of Khan Timur Kutlu and Amir Edegu, supported by Tamerlane. When Tokhtamish asked Vytautas the Great for assistance in retaking the Horde, the latter readily gathered a huge army which included Lithuanians, Ruthenians, Russians, Mongols, Moldavians, Poles, Romanians and Teutonic Knights. In 1398, the huge army moved from Moldavia and conquered the southern steppe all the way to the Dnieper River and northern Crimea. Inspired by their great successes, Vytautas declared a crusade against the Tatars with Pope Boniface IX backing him. Thus, in 1399, the army of Vytautas once again moved on the Horde. 
His army met the hordes at the Vorskla River, slightly inside Lithuanian territory. Although the Lithuanian army was well equipped with cannon, it could not resist a rear attack from Edegu's reserve units. Vytautas hardly escaped alive. Many princes of his kin possibly as many as twenty were killed, and the victorious Tatars besieged Kiev. Meanwhile, Timur Kutlu died from the wounds received in the battle, and Tokhtamish was killed by one of his own men. Topic. Alexandrian Crusade Topic. The Alexandrian Crusade of October 1365 was a minor seaborne crusade against Muslim Alexandria led by Peter I of Cyprus. His motivation was at least as commercial as religious. Topic. Politics and culture Topic. The Crusades had an enormous influence on the European Middle Ages. At times, much of the continent was united under a powerful papacy, but by the 14th century, the development of centralized bureaucracies the foundation of the modern nation-state was well on its way in France, England, Spain, Burgundy, and Portugal, and partly because of the dominance of the Church at the beginning of the Crusading era. The military experiences of the Crusades also had their effects in Europe, for example, European castles became massive stone structures as they were in the East, rather than smaller wooden buildings as they had typically been in the past. In addition, the Crusades are seen as having opened up European culture to the world, especially Asia. Along with trade, new scientific discoveries and inventions made their way East or West. Persian advances including the development of algebra, optics, and refinement of engineering made their way west and sped the course of advancement in European universities that led to the Renaissance in later centuries. The invasions of German crusaders prevented formation of the large Lithuanian state incorporating all Baltic nations and tribes. Lithuania was destined to become a small country and forced to expand to the east looking for resources to combat the crusaders. Topic. Trade Topic. The need to raise, transport and supply large armies led to a flourishing of trade throughout Europe. Roads largely unused since the days of Rome had significant increases in traffic as local merchants began to expand their horizons. This was not only because the Crusades prepared Europe for travel, but also because many wanted to travel after being reacquainted with the products of the Middle East. This also aided in the beginning of the Renaissance in Italy, as various Italian city-states from the very beginning had important and profitable trading colonies in the Crusader states, both in the Holy Land and later in captured Byzantine territory. Increased trade brought many things to Europeans that were once unknown or extremely rare and costly. These goods included a variety of spices, ivory, jade, diamonds, improved glass manufacturing techniques, early forms of gunpowder, oranges, apples, and other Asian crops, and many other products. Topic. Spread of Christianity Topic. Topic. Lithuania Topic. Lithuania and Samogitia were ultimately Christianized from 1386 until 1417 by the initiative of the Grand Duke of Lithuania Jogela and his cousin Vytautas. Topic. Timeline Topic. Topic. See also Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. Further reading Topic. Essler, Philip F. The Early Christian World. Routledge 2004. ISBN 0-415-33312-1. Fletcher, Richard, The Conversion of Europe. From Paganism to Christianity 371-1386 AD. London 1997. Friedman, David Noel, ed. Eerdmans Dictionary of the Bible. W. M. B. Eerdmans Publishing 2000. ISBN 0-8028-2400-5.
Padberg, Lutz v. 1998, Die Christianisierung Europas im Mittelalter, Stuttgart, Reklam German. Pelikan, Yaroslav Jan. The Christian Tradition, The Emergence of the Catholic Tradition 100-600. University of Chicago Press 1975. ISBN 0-226-65371-4. External links Topic: Shafts the Seven Ecumenical Councils.